Hi everyone, this is Mia from Gummy Bears Robotics. In this tutorial, I'll talk about the steps for designing and building FLL box robots with a Spike Prime Lego set. Box robots have rectangular shapes, founded on an internal powertrain supported by external framework. The powertrain consists of a compact cluster of motors and sensors. Power is transferred from the motors internally to drive the wheels and activate the mechanism externally. While they are more complex and difficult to make compared to regular robots, they allow for easier alignment and protection. However, it's very challenging to design a good box robot, because it normally requires many iterations for a compact and sturdy design, and way more parts to build. When you want to make changes, the box robot will be harder to disassemble or repair. So why do FLL teams prefer box robots over regular robots? Well, there are two main advantages to box robots. First, they are very easy to align in the robot game due to their rectangular shape on all sides. Box robots can be easily aligned to walls, flat surfaces, or jigs in any direction, and it makes sure you can quickly start your robot at exact locations within a second. This is very helpful for accurate navigation. Secondly, it's much easier to design slip-on attachments with box robots. With those robots, switching attachments for different missions will take a minimum amount of time. As shown in the GIF in the top right corner, slip-on attachments help minimize transition time between runs. Here is an example of a basic Spike Prime box robot based on the LEGO's advanced driving base assembly building instructions. We slightly modified the front power transfer module so it's easier to add slip-on attachments, and we'll talk about the design process in later slides. You can also find the building instructions linked down in the description below. So, how do you design a box robot? Well, we recommend following the engineering design process. The first step is to identify, which requires you to research references and decide the robot's functionalities and characteristics to include. In the design phase, you need to decide the shape, size, and major parts of your robots, then make drawings or digital models. The next step is to create, where you build a physical prototype with all the Lego pieces and electrical parts. After that, you'll test and iterate your design and keep improving the prototype. Then you can share your cool designs with your team and friends and bring it for competitions. Let's build the core of the robot, the drivetrain. This consists of motors and wheels, or the components of the robot's driving system. You want to configure the motors to the right space, then install the wheels with proper size and supports for them on either side so the robot can navigate better. Next, let's assemble the chassis. It is composed of two core parts, two symmetrical color sensor and caster wheel pairs, and one or more power transfer modules. We recommend having the color sensor caster wheel module in the front of the robot so it can navigate smoothly and perform color alignment easily. The power transfer module should be positioned for easy power output. Here the robot has two modules, one in the front and one in the back. Both have frames surrounding the medium motor, so you can build slip-on attachments and use gear trains to transfer power out. Overall speaking, this box robot has the following features. It has a two-wheel drivetrain with the wheels being supported by structures on either side. This design makes the navigation less wobbly and thus much more reliable. The two color sensors are configured symmetrically on the front side of the robot, so they can be easily used for line squaring. Two caster wheels are also installed next to their sensors, and the robot's weight is evenly balanced for better navigation. There is one medium motor in front and one in the back. Both are designed to allow quick slip-on attachments on the robot, and this will allow it to have more freedom to activate attachments in different directions. It also has flat structures all around, so you can get all the nice features of the box robot. Please also note that this robot has a relatively wide drivetrain configuration, allowing it to have a low center of gravity. Here is another example of a compact box robot design. It's from the Session Brothers and their famous Prime Lesson website. Comparing this to the previous one, this one has a very compact drivetrain design, so the overall size is smaller, and the wheels are fully covered by structural pieces, supporting it well. It has rectangular faces on all four sides, with two color sensors built into the corners of the front part. It is definitely a very good design with lots of movement and utility features. The center of gravity for this robot is a bit high, and due to the compactness of the robot, wiring will be a tough drop. So be careful to not touch the wheels or block any power outputs while you're doing that. The link to this design by the Session Brothers will be included in the description down below.
When designing a box robot, it's always desired to make your robot as sturdy and compact as possible. These features allow for easier navigation and movement between mission models. It can also help prevent the robot from breaking easily, especially during games. A compact drivetrain module is crucial to minimize the robot's size so it can navigate through narrow spaces. A strong base, chassis, and external framework supports and protects the robot, preventing any possible damage done to it while navigating between structures. There are also four important design factors to consider. The wheel size and sensor placement determine the robot's speed, dimensions, and navigation. The robot's compactness and durability determines its size and strength. The overall configuration affects the robot's efficiency. There are many LEGO tech pieces such as panels, rectangular frames, L-beams, or beams with perpendicular holes that are very useful for connecting different assets together, creating a strong connection for the robot. We highly recommend that you use these while you're creating your robot. As stated previously, there are four key factors to a good robot. Compactness and durability, sensor placement, wheel size, and configuration. Navigation tests, which test go straight, turning, and alignment, and drop tests, which test the robot's durability, are two tests you can do to ensure sensors and motors are working properly. Once you have developed a strategy for the robot's path during the game, you can run a navigation test without attachments to see how the robot will travel among mission models. We will go more into testing your robot in a future video. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post some more in-depth videos about building FLL robots. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach us through our email.